Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the darkest timeline. So, me talking, well, nonsense isn't quite the right word, is it? We've got games, movies, no TV, but you'll see why when we get into it. Um, this week's topics of discussion are the lack of time, uh, a new climbing discovery. And uh, we're back to talking about weight loss, so there's, there's there's that. Before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. Big one, obviously, is share the podcast around. That's, you know, word of mouth is, uh, is the absolute best for podcasting. So please do share the podcast around. Right, here we go. This is CookieCast, The Darkest Timeline. Hello, how you doing? Oh, you know what they say about... Pro, 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 pro. You know when you're about to use a word and realise you probably don't actually know the word? Procas, proca, per. Yeah, that joke fell flat, didn't it? Um, I have largely spent the time that I'm supposed to be podcasting just... Not. What is the other saying? The road to that place is paved with good intentions. Um. Yeah, I'm always like, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start at nine o'clock at the latest. Half eight, better. Eight o'clock, perfect. Yeah, I didn't even finish working out until late, so pretty much downhill from there. Um, how how are you? I've moved closer, which will make me louder. I'm just doing a job. A job. Clicky, come on. There we go. Just uh, swapping a plug over for something that I'm absolutely not going to use. Um... Yes, how are you? You well? I have to presume you're like, yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, otherwise, this could get messy. Um, you'll be pleased to hear, I literally have nothing to talk about. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's strap in for a, what's bound to be a very long podcast um the thing is i've got i've got some entertainment stuff a lot of games um which is ironic for my first subject matter um I think this is a subject that's come up quite a lot recently and i think that's probably why i've opted to make it like a main subject matter this week um but this uh, this feeling of having no time um and largely i thought that it was just me i am a man who is in full-time employment with four children two cats and a dog and a powerful need to run work out climb play computer games of many different mediums whilst also fitting in some tv some movies and yeah if you know if you can if you can read a book that would be great now i say it all out loud i'm starting to see why i might have an issue about time um 
so some of the things I've mentioned recently, which you know, I'll just I'll just go over again, is um, I haven't watched any TV in what is now weeks. The reason being, and this will sound strange, is that I've got that much stuff to watch. Those that many programs that I've started, that many programs that I'm like so many episodes into, that many programs that I'm into the second or third series, that many programs that I'm like I definitely want to watch that. That I've reached a point where I'm like I don't have the time for any of it, so I'm not going to do it. Thank you, computer. I need you to know that right now. Um. So, the, so there's 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 been that, right? I think I might have mentioned it. So I think we're all we're all on the same page here. So we've got this thing about um, movies. Um, every other Saturday night, I like to try and watch a movie. What's come up for the last few weeks has been this thing of, oh, but we don't have time to watch a movie. Because watching a movie takes, let's say, on average, two hours out of your evening. But if you started started at seven, that only takes you up to nine o'clock. You've got plenty of your evening left. But you're not starting at seven. Even if you get children to bed, well, then you got to make something to eat. And all of that sort of stuff, you know. Saturday night's a different level than your average night, you know. You need your four different drinks. Standard, obviously. Um, and it's just it's just that sort of thing, you know, Saturday night. Cheat meal, you got to get that, that perfect cheat meal going. That takes time, and so on and so forth. So let's say it's 8 o'clock. Well, 8 o'clock plus 2 hours, that's a 10 o'clock finish by the time you've had, you know, breaks here and there for whatever reason. It's gone 10 o'clock. If you're intending to be in bed 12, half 12, you've basically got 2 hours left of your evening. But... Far too many computer games to only have two hours. So there's that. So what has been happening recently is it's been a case of saying, don't have time for a film. Can't spare the time, can't afford the time. There's no time for that. So computer games, well, let's say you've got two hours. Now, that's very, very rare. Over seven days, I would say, on average, huh, <laughs> three, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say three nights where there's probably two hours okay but as we're going to come on to if you're looking at what i've got these um games on steam that i'm currently playing kind of fit any of that in i've got these vr games kind of fit those in i've got these um playstation games can I fit those in? No. Because behind every single one of those games is a massive backlog. So, okay, well, you know, you've got to, you've got to get them all in, so you're doing them all. I haven't got the time for that. And that's when this thing starts happening. And I've, I've been referring to it as the cream. Um, it's a point in time where you're like, I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to spare. So I have to be playing the absolute 
best of all the things I've got. Makes it difficult when you're like, but then I'm neglecting other things and I don't want to neglect other things for a variety of different reasons, whether it's because I've spent money on it, whether it's because other people have spent money on it, it's a gift, any of those sorts of things. So you then end up dedicating, you then end up putting some time into something that's less like what you want to be doing and then you resent it. Um, let's talk about books. Books are the same. I currently have, I could look it up, but I won't. I will just do it off the top of my head. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, four books to read. I am reading a book and I pre-ordered a book which comes out on Friday. And I've been informed that book will be immediately delivered to me upon release. Because it's, you know, it's all, all Kindle now, isn't it? Cool, groovy, wonderful. It's just another book in a backlog. The last book I read was uh, just short of 400 pages. But, if you take out all the <sighs> pictures, <laughs> yes, that is that is true, pictures, and I don't mean drawings, I mean actual photographs, uh, um, of which there were many, and you take out all the training plans, of which there was quite a few, and you take out all the times that the book repeated itself, you'd probably be lucky to have a 200-page book. That is not in any way an exaggeration. There were points in time in that book where a page of the book was a, was a photograph. Um, there was a point in that, in that book where several pages... You know, anywhere up to like 10 or 15 pages was just a training plan. My point being is, if, if I need the training plan, that's great. If I don't, like I'm reading it in the middle of the night, then I probably don't need those pages. Um, as time went on, I started to feel like I was wasting my time reading that book because I knew I had books behind it. And something I later realised was that one of the books in the backlog I had purchased before the book I was reading. And that gave me an uneasy feeling. So, I've been, do, like I, I say, I've been using this sort of cream method, you know. Um, oh, I'm going to absolutely spend my time... Doing the best things possible. That sounds perfect to me. Then the guilt kicks in. So then I have to carve out a piece of time where I can say, that thing there is not, not quite the thing I want, not quite the thing I want to do. Oh, I don't want to neglect it, so I'm going to have to dedicate that time, which I do. Sometimes it annoys me, and it makes me um, go to bed unhappy. What that means is it spurs me on to go back to, well, the thing I want to be doing is this, so I should just do that. And that's basically how the week goes. The week is very much... Uh, I don't have time for TV. I've got I've got games and books and of, of all different types, of all different sort of media formats. Um, but I'm also aware that I think it's because I know I can't dedicate the time. I've been trying to watch the same episode of Invincible for weeks at this point. That's not a joke. Like I think that, I think I'm now in the third week where that episode still isn't finished. Um, and it's not 
that I'm like, well, I, I'm not enjoying it. I don't like it. It's purely, oh, I've watched 10 minutes of it here and five minutes of it there. So, where am I going with this? Well, I thought this was me. I thought, yeah, this is a me thing. This is one of those where I'm just... Um, I'm in that fortunate position where I've got too much to do. Um, and, as I previously mentioned, when you've got to work 35 hours a week and you've got four children and you've got a dog that needs walking twice a day and you've got to get a workout in and a run in and X number of days you go climbing. And there physically isn't the time... So you have to maximise your time. So I'm like, it's a me thing. I don't know. But recently it's felt like this sort of, it's quite an oppressive thing. It's felt like kind of like a, like a stressful thing. Um, Then I had a conversation with a couple of people completely separate to each other. Just a... Like a, oh, you know, what have you been up to over the weekend? Or what did you do last night? Or what, you know, what are you doing that's not this sort of conversations? And what I found was the people I was talking to were saying... Very much the same thing. Oh, I don't have time for this because I can't dedicate time to this because I'm doing something else. Oh, I haven't got time to put this here because... And people like saying, oh, I've basically given up doing this activity at the moment. Um, I spoke to somebody the other day and they were like saying that they'd given up watching TV because they physically didn't have the time for it. And I'm like, I'm in exactly the same position. So, this realisation dawned on me that it wasn't just me. I'm like, that's interesting. All of a sudden, everybody's saying that they're trying to do the absolute best at the time because they don't have the time to not be doing the best. Interesting. So I started recently looking at why that might be, what's going on, you know, what what is the common thing across the board. And I'm like, is it, here's, here's a theory I've been working on, is it because everything's awful? Now, I know all of a sudden I've flipped and gone all negative, but bear with me. You look out the window and it's tweeting birds and, you know, sun is shining and, and all those great things. And then you pick up your phone and you go on social media and social media informs you that the world is in fact on fire at all times. So everything's awful, principle. Uh, everything's awful all the time and getting worse all the time and for a long time that was just the way it was you could turn your tv on and put uh, a point in time put the news on and the news will tell you things aren't great and you go well i'm sitting here in my in my warm living room with a full belly and the lights are on and i, I had a shower and um yeah, you're telling me that things aren't aren't great, things are awful. But how bad are things really? That was X amount of time ago. Now, obviously, you wouldn't sit down and put the TV on and put the news on at a particular time of day because we live in a world where there's a 24-hour news network. Um, all the news all the time. Obviously. So all the news all the time tells you that everything's bad all the time. 
okay, there's nothing new, nothing new to us as people. We know everything's bad, but it's not. It's not bad for us. It's bad for other people. However, what we've started seeing now is now it now it is bad for us and we're being told it's bad for us because well you can't can't afford anything can't afford to do anything can't afford to go anywhere can't afford to buy anything can't afford nice things can't afford medium things everything you buy has to be the cheapest or the longest lasting or whatever because everything's awful and so it's kind of like a oh okay um maybe things are awful and then you've got you know oh this is this really bad thing is going to happen tomorrow that's the other one um the sort of what you maybe sort of consider sensationalism of news and and that sort of media where it's like oh by the way tomorrow really bad things are going to happen and you're like i mean that sounds pretty awful honest honestly that sounds not good is it it, it is it not good and you know conversations that i've had with a couple of people recently talk about how you know the average person is feeling that squeeze whether it's monetary whether it's the fact that you know all you seem to be told is that x number of countries in the world are at war with each other whether it's you know if you have a mortgage your mortgage is going to go up 600 percent and bankrupt you in one foul swoop if you rent well you don't because you can't get a rented property and if you do it's going to cost three times your wages that covers everybody that you know the 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 x percent of people who have no mortgage well it's fine because you know <laughs> my favorite thing recently is a packet of 12 little square bite size pieces um truffle not the mushroom the chocolate um just some sort of like little little bite things in a well-known baker's 12 of them for five pound 25 um and i was like do you suppose they've ever sold any of those who looks at that and goes, it's fantastic value, right there. So yeah, nobody can afford anything. Everything's awful. You're probably going to lose your house for one reason or another, because if you live in a rented property, let's face it, or the landlords are going to kick you out so that they can put 900 students in there and charge them 14 times what they're charging you. Do you like computer games? Because, you know, five years ago they were 40 quid. But now they're 70. Do you like eating? Because all of that's more expensive. The things that that we're faced with now affect all of us. Affect, affect all of us. You know, barring the 1% and all that. So everybody's affected now and everything's awful. And we're being told that everything's awful. And it's like it's like we didn't believe it. So now we needed to see the proof. And the proof is that they were right. Everything is awful. Bringing that back to your day-to-day life, does it not stand true that you would want to find the absolute best best way to spend your free time to convince yourself that not everything is awful Mm, no yes no that is a theory i've been working on 
Like I say, intro. I was I was honestly convinced it was just me that was spending my time. Like oh, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to do this. Oh no, can't do that because I'll be missing out on doing the good things. Turned out it wasn't just me. So, um, a rarity, a rarity happened. For what is, I think, the third time ever. Myself and Leon managed to arrange it so that we, the royal we, uh, could climb together. Um, yesterday. Now, <clears throat> I don't like Sunday climbing. It is busy from the jump. Instantly, I'm out. I can handle a certain level of, of busyness, but this is a whole other level. This is every man and his dog. This is everybody's going climbing on a Sunday. Um, and I'm not a fan. One time, many moons ago, <clears throat> I went on a Sunday and vowed to never go again. And I've never been since. Um... But there was a conversation, and it was very much, uh, we have this rare opportunity to go, but it will be the Sunday. Um, why don't we do an hour, and then I can just leave her to it. And that was the conversation. Um, discovered something that I still can't get over. I am taller than Lan by... I think it's like four inches. Um, some days, doesn't feel like it. Other days, I'm like, why are you so short? Um, and that's basically that. We were trying something, climbing, and I'm like, why can you reach from there to there when I can't? And she was like, because it's easy. You just stretch and reach and grab it. I'm like, no, I'm not talking about, like, I'm doing it wrong. I'm talking about I physically cannot reach that far. And this led to a discovery. And the discovery is that although I am taller, Leanne is longer. So we both <laughs> put our hands above our heads. <laughs> and she... I'd been beat by several inches, and I'm like, I don't understand how that's a thing. Um, positive ape index, in case you're wondering. So, I always feel a bit more under pressure when it's when it's the two of us. She doesn't take none of that crap. That's part of the problem. I'll be like, she'll be like, oh, why don't you do this? I'll be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. She's like, go and do it. Uh, okay and I go up and I climb it and I do it and I come down and I'm like see I did it she's like cool now do this one I'm like but I've just come down she's like yeah and you don't have long so get up the next one so there's an element of that and she she won't take any excuses or any of my um shit so there were points in time where I'm like I don't like the look of that and she'd be like crack on like I don't think I can do it. She's like, just get, just get it done. Um. So I was trying stuff and doing stuff, trying new stuff, um, achieving new stuff. I was like, this is cool. I'm enjoying this. Um. And then, so, kind of double back a little bit, and then I'll start going. Um. I had, a, I had a discovery recently, which is not ideal when um, when climbing. And that discovery was that I am unable to let go. No, I don't mean relationship-wise. I mean, I'm unable to let go in certain situations. So, as I'm sure you're aware, climbing is a situation where you move a foot here and a foot there and a hand here and a hand there and in 
certain percentage of scenarios, that works fine. Move a hand, move a foot, move a hand, move a foot. Or move a hand, move two feet. Whichever in that scenario, great. Um, what I found is in certain situations, I can't let go with my hands. Feet don't seem to be as much of an issue. They're a bit of a of a dangly appendage when you're in those situations. So you just put your feet where you need to. Hands, on the other hand, I feel like everything goes through your hands. And you're like, oh, I'm holding on. And in some scenarios, for dear life. And those are scenarios where my head is going right i need to let go with that hand and move that hand to that hold and my body's like no it's like now let's not be silly here just let go no because i don't want to fall and die so that's been a thing for a while now um i can't really tell you anything more about it it's psychological it's fear-based it's um ability based there is a lot that goes into it but idea but in ideally jesus um but ultimately possibly the worst trait to have for climbing yes i love climbing i absolutely can't let go of the wall what i found off the back of this is that ultimately i just lean towards either Climbs I know I can do, or climbs that push me, but don't really have that involvement. Um, I've been working on uh, a route recently that has it a little bit, but there's a lot. It's a lot more upright, and at this point in time, absolutely can't do it. So there i don't know why this happened i don't know what happened to cause it um but something that happened yesterday was in the process of trying to um climb something i i will say this i just seen leanne do the same route so i was like okay maybe it was just from watching her uh, there was a point in time where there was like a, okay, there's a hold there. We need to go to that hold. Um, normally, I wouldn't be able to do that. However, for some reason, I'm thinking if I get a bit of a swing on the go and I engage the correct climbing position, uh, remember, remember people, climb on your skeleton, not on your muscles. Um I think I can do it. Now, that in itself completely goes against everything at this point in time. But I tried it and it worked. And I came down and I said, do you know something? That's the first time I've been able to do that. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like... That's the issue I have with climbing. I can't do that. But I just did it. And it changed everything. Because it allowed me to finish that route. And she was like, ah, oh, cool, well done. Like, yes. So, Away we went, we went over to a different route, and I was like, I can't do this route, because I can't get to the uh, the two-handed hold right there. Physically can't do it, absolutely no way, no, no, no chance. Leanne had to go. She did not get as far as I said, hey, I can't, I can't get there. She couldn't. She couldn't get that far. I was like, "Okay, maybe, maybe that makes two of us." Um, she was like, "Well, have a go and see what you can do." And apparently, I was wrong. Now, 
I will hold my hands up on this one and say this. There was a tiny bit of you couldn't do it, so maybe I want to be able to do it to prove that I have some sort of validation in this situation where you are a lot better than me at this activity. There may or may not have been that um, but it largely re- would have required the same move again being in a position where leaning back hanging off etc etc to go to the next hold was a swing and a throw and a grab absolutely not in my wheelhouse it's not happening it's not it's not a thing until apparently it was when I did it and went, what, what is happening right now? And I don't know, you know, I came down, I was like, I I did it again. I didn't finish the route, by the way, but I did get further than other people. Um, I was like, I did it again. And I was like, did what? I was like, that's that, that thing I can't do that I just did. She was like, yeah. Yeah, you did. Right. I don't want to make too big a deal here, but this is potentially a game changer for my climbing. And there's a part of me that's excited, and there's a part of me that's pleased, and there's a part of me that's scared. And I'm now like, I'm going to have to go and try and replicate that, because part of me was like a bit of a one-off. So then I'm talking to Ed. <laughs> I'm talking to Ed today. I was like, hey, we had this discovery that I'm taller than Leanne, but she's longer. And he was like, ah, ape index. I was like, exactly. I was like, we also had another discovery uh, that, I, that I was able to let go. And immediately, <laughs> immediately Ed's response was, Leanne. I was like, what? It's like, that's Leanne's influence. She has absolutely no issues trying to break you. Whereas I don't want to break you. So, whereas she's like, get it done. Uh, I, I wouldn't. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. She's got no issues just telling me to sort my shit out and do it. So, yeah. That was interesting. To me, maybe not to you which probably means I shouldn't have put it on this podcast. Um, Hey, here's a subject we haven't talked about for a while. Weight loss. And if we haven't talked about it for a while, that probably tells you everything you need to know. And the fact that we're talking about today, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. I'm going to tell you that I've sorted my shit out. I'm going to tell you that I worked really hard last week I uh, had my had my eating dialed in had my working out dialed in everything was perfect and then I didn't lose any weight you know that's coming and right now you suspect me to go but no no that's exactly what we we're going to talk about so um Finally, managed to sort my shit out. Um, to a degree, um, upped. Well, everything I think. Increased distance running wise. Um, obviously, got the treadmill situation sorted. So, treadmill runs back on the cards. Um, increased. It's hard to explain, but I, I would say this. Increased workout vigor, if that makes sense. And then, obviously, like I said, I, had, I added an additional climbing session. And, um, yeah, Leanne's a tough taskmaster. There's no, no coffee drinking on her watch. You're up and down those walls. And after a while, I was cream crackered. But, anyway... So, food-wise, there were days where I ate 
one meal. It was a double-edged sword. One part of it was intentional. You know, can I do it? Can I get back to that way? Another part of it was through time. You know, it's like, oh, it's Wednesday. I don't have time for breakfast. And if I'm honest, I don't really have time for lunch. And then the next thing, it's tea time. That kind of thing. Um, Cut out all the shit. Real clean living. Couple of days, just one meal. Um, On the other days, you know, high protein for the second meal. Um... Just, just all of that. Sunday, fasted all day. Tea at night. No crap. Bosh. So I had myself this morning. And I was like... As I've said this, I've said this before. You've got those three scenarios. Scenario number one, you didn't lose any weight. And you jump out the window. Because let's face it... Nobody wants to be in that situation. I worked really hard. And I did. I worked really hard. On every aspect. Eating. Not eating crap. Eating clean. Dialing in the the, the exercise across the board. So scenario one. You lose no weight. And you are like. I'm going to chew my own veins out of my arm. Scenario two. You have lost not very much weight, but at least it's not a gain. At least you've lost something. There you go. It's a small amount of for your for your large for your large amount of effort. Scenario number three is the scenario we all want. You lost a lot of weight. In fact, you lost more weight than you thought was possible. That's the one we all want. Unfortunately for me, that is not achievable. Gone are the days where I'd be like, I lost six pounds this week. Um, but then again, you know, when you weigh 30 stone and you have to stop eating entire chocolate oranges as a snack, yeah, you can probably lose six stone in a week. Uh, six, stone, six pounds in a week. Um, so... Stepped on the scales this morning and I had scenario number two. I lost weight. It wasn't anywhere near what I felt it should have been or what I would have liked. It wasn't nothing. Yay. It was almost nothing. Boo. Honestly, strap yourselves in to listen to me bitch moan and complain about losing next to no weight for the next X number of weeks. Oh, just it's the it's the absolute worst. And I know I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Come on, dude, it's it's not that difficult. If you if you don't put the shit in your system and you and you exercise a lot, you're gonna lose weight. Well, here's my challenge to you. Swap days with me. And if you're happy by the end of the first day being told that at the end of that day you are going to have lost zero weight, you then have to repeat the process for seven days and be told that you've lost two pounds at the end of it and then you tell me that you're happy that's my challenge to you so new week new opportunity for fucking disappointment but it's the game we play, people. Um, only, only you know, nine pounds to go. Nine pounds to go where, I, I hear you ask. 
to get back to zero, to get back to where I started. So, uh, in the words of Hades, that gets two thumbs way up. Working on that principle, it's going to take me five weeks. Oh, um, <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware, that just gets me back to zero. Zero, in case you're wondering, in case you have any interest, is about three and a half stone too many. Just in case you need to know. Um, that is the week. Obviously, at this point in time, I will point out that I said I had nothing to talk about, and I've been talking for 45 minutes. Some would say this is almost like a job to me. If only I was getting paid. So, no TV. I think we established that. Movie-wise... I've got a movie to talk about that I've seen about a bajillion times. But, I can circumnavigate my own rules on this one. Um, and I have a new film to talk about. So, having said everything I, <laughs> having said everything I said earlier in the podcast, Saturday night, me and Leanne sat down to watch a movie. Typical. We've had a few things on our list. We watched um, Fast X. I remember that was a thing. Um, yeah, drawing a blank right now. Not important. We've, we've watched some stuff. We've had stuff on our list. Because of our... Mutual interest in climbing these days. I said, do you know what film we should watch? We should watch Cliffhanger. Now, somebody out there just said, no. And somebody was like, hells yeah. Um, I was like, Cliffhanger, it's, climbing, you know, it's obviously a climbing film. It's more mountain climbing, but it is a climbing film. 90 Stallone, you know, that kind of thing. At which point, Leanne said, I've never seen Cliffhanger. And I went, uh, what? I've seen Cliffhanger a lot. It used to be a staple for me. At a particular point in time, um, I watched a lot of Cliffhanger. We were able to pay the princely sum of £5 to get the digital remastered version um, so Saturday night we sat down and watched it I'm not going to go through too much stuff I'm just going to highlight a few things for a film made in the 90s yeah you can see it was made in the 90s but pretty much still stands up it, it probably still holds up I would say um, Leon, having never seen it originally watching it now she was she was very much like pretty sure that stands up um, so, you know, that was cool. She really enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it again. Like I say, seen it a few times. So, some of the interesting things from watching it were, um, at one point, <laughs> at one point, Lam was like, oh my God, look at the background. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah. There was a point where it was, Sort of more obvious now than probably then. But it was... Um, the background was just tiny little trees to make them look really far away. And it was just all... T obviously, you could just see it was just a it was just a set. Um, there were some very impressive things in it. Obviously, they've used a situation where it's like... This person has, has fallen whilst climbing. Oh, no. And I was like... I can't imagine what's in the backpack on their back. Definitely won't be a parachute. You know, that sort of thing. Um, but it was good. It was, it was, yeah, I I have a soft spot for that film, rightly or wrongly. I thought it was interesting at the point in time, right at the beginning, I was like, hey, look, 
the the uh, the Ravagers are back together again because obviously you got Michael Rooker and Sylvester Stallone. Um, so yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a good, perfect Saturday night movie. I think um, John Lithgow at his most evil, um, all that sort of stuff. So. Something struck me. I was like, I wonder. So, Cliffhanger cost $65 million to make. In the 90s. Now, in 90s money, $65 million. A lot of money. Um, I imagine... A large amount of that money will have been spent on the hijacking scene at the start of the film. Whichever way you slice it, when you've got like jets and things involved. Oh, sweet mother. Sorry, just punch the microphone as you do. Um, when you've got like jets and stuff involved, it's going to cost money. Simple as that. Um, I will say this, pretty sure... The Dark Knight Rises has an almost identical scene. I was watching Cliffhanger and I was like, this is just like, this is the Dark Knight Rises. So, yeah, that was interesting. Um, Cliffhanger made $255 million worldwide. And that was that. It's as simple as that. It made nearly five times its budget. Obviously, that is a huge success uh, by anyone's standards. And that was that. There was no sequel. There was no, um, you know, Cliffhanger 2. This time it's war. Cliffhanger 2, hang, hang on. If that film had been made now... We'd be watching Cliffhanger 9. And it would have been considered to be a massive flop. But they'd be announcing 10, 11 and 12. It was a film. It came out. It made money. And everybody walked away. Probably laughing their asses off. Uh, The screenplay written by uh, a guy. I can't tell you who one of the guys was. I can tell you who the other one was. Sylvester Stallone. Um, I, I was like, can you imagine something like that being made now? A film that makes nearly five times its budget. Well, firstly, five times its budget would be like, you know, $500 million because movie budgets are just astronomical nowadays. And like I say, tell me that there wouldn't be a bajillion sequels, spin-offs. They'd have rebooted it by now. Cliffhanger 10, the reboot or something. Um, I got a film for Christmas. And I, over the course of the last week, finally got it watched. And in a lot of ways, I'm glad I did. Um, I watched the film Sisu. Sisu is, um, very very quickly, very briefly, Sisu is set at the end of the Second World War, where um, the, uh, the Nazis have realised that they've lost the war, and have taken what, they, what is referred to as a scorched earth approach, uh, by just basically burning everything to the ground on their way out. Uh, they have to surrender, turn over their arms, etc. Um, the main character in the film um, is initially a, a guy. He's a, he's, he's a gold miner. Uh, finds a little bit of gold in a river. Realises there must be gold in the land around that river. And starts digging. And digs a lot of holes and eventually finds a big gold deposit pulls it all out of the ground sticks in his satchels and away he goes 
Uh, he's on his on his mission to look for a bank, and in the process, he comes across um, a load of uh, Nazi soldiers going the other way, and there's a a disagreement, an altercation, and then things go completely sideways when he proceeds to murder all of the Nazis, and that then. Starts the uh, starts the ball rolling. It was basically referred to as John Wick, set at the end of the Second World War. Uh, the guy it turns out is a Finnish commando. Um, very much there's very much aspects and points where they do like a kind of a boogeyman story. Um, it's short, you know. There's absolutely no way you can you can't talk about a film like this and not put John Wick in the picture. And let's face it, John Wick wasn't the first to do it. Have you ever seen The Punisher? Um, I saw a trailer for this film a while back and went, "Yes, please." Um, I got it as a gift for Christmas, and I've only just watched it. <clears throat> So, honestly, one of the most beautiful films I've seen in a long time. Some of the shots in that film are spectacular. Just beautiful. So, I will say that straight off the bat. Just beautiful. Um, The stuff at the beginning, kind of a slow, steady, a guy... Is digging a hole and then digging another hole and so on. Slow, methodical, fine. The guy gets the gold, he leaves, bumps into all the Nazis, kills a load of them, and you're like, hell yeah. Um there's a there's a the like the next the next sort of action bit absolutely phenomenal again beautiful beautifully shot beautiful imagery just mm, chef's kiss <sighs> then it kind of took a bit of a downwards turn what i expected to be saying at this point in time is uh, it, it sagged a little in the middle unfortunately it didn't sag in the middle what it turned out was it kind of was a steady downwards decline of the movie from that point on not massively but if we tell you that John Wick is the boogeyman and he killed a guy with a pencil. And his suit is bulletproof. And he's a master of martial arts. And every weapon under the sun. But he's good with a handgun. And he can drive. And he can do all of this. And and he's just basically unkillable. That's fine. That's believable. Especially when you add to that. Um, oh, he's got he's got revenge. Revenge turns that that unkillable aspect up a notch. Drive, determination, and and all of those things put together means that you can say this guy's suit's bulletproof, and people go, yeah, okay. I know that's not true. I know that's not real. I'm prepared to give you that. As long as you give me drive and determination and grit and... Brrr, we're all on board. We are with you. And whatever my opinions of two, three, and four, I think John, the first John Wick, is a masterpiece. It's a beautiful film. But what I don't want, I don't think any of us want, is. When you say, oh, this guy can't be killed. He is unkillable. You're, you're, you're standing on a knife edge there. 
Because if there's grit, drive and determination, yes. If we define the laws of physics, that's something else. And if we're just saying, this guy just can't die, that's a little more supernatural. So, we've got that. Then, to add to that, a series of coincidences. Oh, this coincidentally just so happened to happen. Followed by another coincidence. Well, wouldn't you believe it? That coincidentally happened. Oh, another coincidence. Oh my God, another coincidence. Surely not. When you add all of those up, you're like, oh man. When you look at those scenarios in films and you're like, you could have done this better. I was with you up to this point. Now you are you are mocking me, sir. You are taking my good faith in you and you are mocking me. And then it kind of like I say, it what I wanted to say was it, it sagged a little in the middle. And at the point in time where I was like, oh, it's going to pick up again now and it's going to salvage itself at the end. It it did and it didn't at this, all at the same time. There were these aspects at the back end where it's like, oh, man, another situation where you could have done it better, made it more believable whilst being unbelievable. So there was that. Then there was this bit right at the end where I was like, what are we doing here? And rather than this guy being John Wick, it was weirdly the character that came to mind was Solomon Grundy. Can't explain why. All I know is that you know, a guy that's out there wandering around who is basically dead, but you know, just keeps going because it started to feel a bit like that. In fact, there's a bit where he had to crawl out of a swamp. Right at the very end, I had a, a, a chuckle, a smile, whatever. But it just it went from yeah, this is believable to ah, it's a bit far fetched, isn't it? And what I didn't want was yeah, it's a bit far fetched, isn't it? And what I did want was. Yeah, I can just about believe that. Solid, solid 6 out of 10. I'd, I'd maybe have gone 7. But I don't know. I think, I, I, I think to be honest, I think I felt disappointed. Because it was such a strong start. So strong. And it looked amazing. But. Yeah. Computer games. Lots and lots of computer games. What's nice is some of them are, are, just, are just a mention. Um, so let's talk. Right, we'll go PlayStation first. Two PlayStation games I've played in the last week are the Crew Motor Fest. Um. Crew Motor Fest. I'm really enjoying that game. A lot, surprisingly, a lot more than I expected to. I expected it to be a poor man's horizon. That's why I expected. Forza Horizon, by the way. Uh, that's why I expected it to be a poor man's Forza Horizon. And I was fine with that. I'm like, yeah, I'm on board. Let's do this. I love Horizon. If you want to give me more of that, great. But what, it, what has happened instead is it's gone, yeah, we understand, you know, Forza Horizon is a thing, but we find, we feel that there is room in that market for us as well. And there absolutely is. I will happily play the next Forza and go, hells yeah. 
But it doesn't mean that this game doesn't have its place. And the more I play it, the more I enjoy it. The same cannot be said for the Avatar game. My fucking word. Oh, wow, this game, man. Oh, jeez, it's... Very much in the in the same vein as as a Sisu in the in the way that this game could so easily be good. It could so easily be good. It has to have hands down possibly the worst map system I think I've ever had the misfortune of being forced to use. It's awful. There there are so many small mechanics in the game that make the game worse. There was a point last night where I had to solve a mystery. And the mystery was that somebody dropped a tablet and it broke. That's the short version. The long version is the game wouldn't register one of the clues. So I spent about 25 minutes trying to complete this part of the game. And the game wouldn't let me. Because that's fun. I then had to return to base, which was a bajillion miles away. So I fast travelled. No, no, no issues there. Got back to the base. I was like, oh, I found this tablet. It's like, oh, well, okay. You should you should go and find out whose it is. Should I? This involved going to random people at the base and going, is this your tablet? No, nope, not mine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, thanks. Oh. Is this your tablet? No. Are you sure? Yes. After 10 minutes of that, I'm like, is this is this game serious? Is this seriously what I'm supposed to be doing with my time? Now, here's the thing. A couple of reviews I saw for this game said that this game gets a lot better after about five hours and you get your flying bird thing. Very much like my issue with Diablo, that the DLC for Diablo was a horse, and I still don't have a horse in that game. The DLC for Avatar is a flying thing, and I'm like, cool. Fuck a duck. This game better get good. Because, wow, it, it, it's got some batshit mental mechanics. Holy smokes. Somebody said to me today that they were considering getting it. And all I said to them was, please don't. Please don't do that. Oh. I, honestly, I'm going to keep playing it. I'm going to force myself to keep playing it. Because it is not... This is what I realised about this game. It's not an enjoyable time. While you're playing... You're not enjoying it. And hey, whatever happened to all the fun? Whose tablet is this? I mean, come on. Um, I... Um, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch these two around. Um, Steam Deck wise, still digging the Steam Deck. Um... might be looking into whether I need one. But that's another story. Um Steam Deck wise I played more Forgive Me Father 2. Uh another game that's absolutely fantastic so far, touch wood. Um just a just a good game. Solid, enjoyable, fun. Um so, here is the first of these things I'm going to talk about. I managed to get a trial for a game. Uh, I got a trial of Age of Empires 3. And I started playing that on Steam Deck. Um, 
man, you got to love a trial. Um, not the easiest game to work out. I I don't want to be the guy that says I imagine it probably is a bit easier playing it on a PC versus playing it on the Steam Deck. Um, but I got there. I managed to do. I managed to do some stuff. Completely ballsed up my first sort of play of it, and had to restart and then do it better and managed to then win. So that was cool. Um, I think with it being a trial, it's doing that. We want you to experience different elements of the game. So there's that, um, which made it feel a little bit higgledy piggledy. Um, and as far as a trial's concerned, at no point has it told me that it's like a timed version. So I don't know how the trial goes about ending. Um, but it was very good. Um, I, for the third time, finished uh, Into the Radius. Oh, we're on to VR now, by the way. For the third time, I finished Into the Radius. And I'll tell you this much. I don't think I've ever played a game where each of my playthroughs have been very similar in some respects. Let's face it, I do like certain weapons and I gravitate towards them do you want the best handgun in the game yes do you want anything other than that no not really it's that kind of thing it's like do you want the best machine gun you can get yes do you want a different one not really <laughs> so there is an aspect of that um that kind of, well, I know the guns I like, so I'm going to get those. And I know I need a headlamp, so I'm going to get that. And I need a gas mask, so I'm going to get that. That kind of thing. Um, as far as playthroughs are concerned, I have never played a game that has given me three completely different experiences. The first playthrough was like, here's this game. Learn it and love it. Second playthrough was like, here's this game again. You're going to play it different because that's natural. You're going to try and do different stuff. And we're going to basically give you the same experience again. And it's you that's going to make it different. Okay, I'm on board with that. Third playthrough was... Things are about to get weird. And as far as the game's concerned, it's weird anyway. I could have... So... Not to ruin anything, but there is a thing that you've got... I think you've got seven days between what is known as the Rift. And the Rift resets everything. Um, the first playthrough, I'd had, I think, like four Rifts by the time I finished the game. Second playthrough, I'd gone through, like, three, I think. I could have finished the game within the first Rift this time i managed to get to the last mission in the game before the first rift had happened don't know why don't know how as far as a game i have spent many hours in certain areas of that game on my third playthrough i didn't visit some of those areas at all one of the things was, like, oh, uh, each time I've played it, I've had this mission to do. Third time round, didn't do it. Um, oh, you got to go to uh, a castle to do the last mission. Before that, you always get a particular mission, which is to go to the area where the castle is and collect a box. Didn't get that mission. So massive chunks of the game were missing... But still still played and finished it. And I, I came away from that third playthrough like I have never experienced a game that has given me such a completely different playthrough. So weird. Super cool, but weird. Um, I, to try and um, wean myself off into the radius 
which is very difficult because it's hands down one of my favorite games. Um, I purchased Survival Nation, which is a zombie game, which is also a survival game. You can see where I'm going here. Um, every review, apart from the reviews on the Oculus Store, which is interesting, uh, every review of the game is starts out fine, goes downhill fast. By the end of it, it's just dull. And I'm like, hmm. Then they go and talk about a lot of the mechanics involved for the game, kind of brings it back. I'm like, that's a solid six, seven out of ten game. It's got my name written all over it. There is a sale on currently. It's quite a big sale. And it was in the sale. There. Do it. Let's let's do it. Let's get it. I bought the game. I installed the game. And I played the game. Um, and inside of an hour, I turned the game off and went, I've probably had enough of that for now. I'll come back to that later. And this morning, I requested a refund for the game, realising I'm not going back to that game. Not good, is is my review. Feels like if it was the first version of that game, I'd be like, great start. Where are you going to take it from here? As it's not the first version, as it's the whatever version, it's just had a Quest 3 update to make it play better on the Quest 3. Um, yeah, not not a, not good. Not polished in any way, shape or form. Um, some of the mechanics for that game are not good. Shooting mechanics, awful. You cannot aim for shit in that game. Um, it's like, oh, you need to do this to survive and do that to survive and make sure you've got some water. I just... Unpolished, unfinessed, not... Just just not good. Um, I, ca I, I didn't even play it for an hour. I came out of it and was like, I I'm going to leave that now and I'm going to come back as I already said and yeah I, I knew this morning I was never going back so I was like I'm just gonna have a refund on that yeah um however speaking of trials when I came out of survival nation saw at the top of my library um a trial 20 minute trial for a game called crisis brigade 2 and I went ah that's that game that's modelled off the back of Time Crisis. Now, I loved Time Crisis a lot. I was like, oh, this could be interesting. 20-minute free trial. Bosh, let's give this a whirl. So much fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I was like, this is just Time Crisis in VR. Who doesn't love that? Didn't cost me a penny to play it. Great little concept. Lovely little game. Got to the end, it was like, hey, you finished your trial. Do you want to buy it? It's nine quid on sale. I was like, yeah, maybe. Um, so there's a possibility that I might come back to trying that. Um, or, you know before the sale ends, maybe taking a punt on it. So we shall see. Um, that is the podcast where, yet again, I didn't have anything to talk about, and it's the b b you know, best part of an hour and 20 minutes. So, yeah, apparently I can talk about nothing. There we go. That's it. Catch you later. So there you go. What do you think to that? Another one done. Another one gone. Tuh, where did they all go? Big thank you for watching. Big thank you for listening. Big thank you for being here, being part of the crew. If you want to be more of a crew member, you can uh, click the like button, share the podcast around, leave us a review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, wherever you get your podcasts, do subscribe. Uh, check out the website, thecookiecast.com. 
there we've got social media links and an email button for you to get in touch with us that is it for this one until next time i'm going to say bye and i'll see you then thanks for listening if you liked this episode of cookie cast please like share and subscribe